Hi, this is Leah Leininger, Health Sciences Librarian at UNC Greensboro, and I'd like to give you an overview of library resources and services. These are a few of the things that I'd like to cover in the next few minutes. So the university libraries has two physical branches, but you don't ever have to actually step inside the doors of Jackson Library or Ship and Music Library to take advantage of the great articles, videos, dissertations, books, and other formats that we have. Just go online to our library website, library.uncg.edu. We have a fantastic array of resources available online for you. The library homepage is kind of the starting point to get to those things, though. The account that you'll need is your UNCG computer account. We call it your iSpartan account. When you click into a library subscription, you'll see a page that says UNCG Authentication. You're going to need to enter the username and password that you use for iSpartan, which same thing as, <laughs> as you use for UNCG Canvas and email as well. This same account can also be used to get into interlibrary loan services. So for instance, if you identify an article that we do not own and you need to find a copy, you can use interlibrary loan to ask that ILL staff figure out which library has a copy and get a PDF for you. There's another service through interlibrary loan that can be very helpful for online and distance education students who live outside of Guilford County. If there is a print book that you would like that is just sitting on a shelf waiting to be checked out, we understand that you're probably not able to drive to the library and pull it off the shelf. So you can use the interlibrary loan request form to ask that this book be checked out to you and shipped to you free of charge. In terms of account help, if you have a hard time with your username or password, especially um, logging in across different systems with your iSpartan account, please contact Campuswide ITS. 336-256-8324. If you have a hard time specifically getting into library resources, please use Chat with a Librarian or Ask Us, and the phone number for that is 336-334-5419. Oop, I'm jumping around a little here. <laughs> Something else that could be useful to you if you're uh, nearby to Greensboro you could visit the Spartan Card Center in person and get a UNCG ID card. That would allow you to check books out of the library if you're able to walk up to the shelves and pull them off the shelf to check them out. Also, your UNCG ID card could be used if you would like to check out print books from a different library in the UNC system. We have reciprocal borrowing privileges, which basically means for other libraries in the UNC system, UNCG students can visit that location and check their print items out. You definitely would need to contact the checkout desk at that library to ask about their policies for lending to UNCG students. It's possible they would accept another form of ID, especially if you're not close enough to UNCG, to come during the work week and get um, a UNCG ID card. Definitely, if you use that option of checking books out of a library someplace else, say Chapel Hill or UNC Wilmington, you will need to return their books directly to them. Something else that is optional but could be useful is your university ID number, sometimes also known as your UNC Genie number. You can use this as part of your library uh, renewing items account. If you have had books shipped to you and you've checked them out, you can actually renew them online using this UNC Genie number and a password that you create. For more information about that account, please go to tinyurl slash UNCG renew. I do want to show you the library homepage 
including some services and resources that are going to be pretty useful to you. At library.uncg.edu, you can see services and resources directly. For instance, this red search box can help you find many of the items that we own. Not all of them, but many of them. If you're going to use this box, I would highly suggest that you go to Advanced Search so that you can limit to items at UNCG, whether physically or available online to UNCG libraries. Other things that you might want to know about. Under Services, this is where Interlibrary Loan is located. If you happen to identify an article that we don't own, or if you identify a book that you would like to have shipped to you. Also, chat with a librarian, which is library help weekdays, evenings, and weekends. You'll see that there's a phone number. And during the hours when our chat with a librarian service is staffed, you'll see a chat box that says available. And you can type a question there. Summer hours are a little bit shorter than hours during the fall and the spring semesters. Back to library home. Other things that you might want to know about that I've mentioned before. Under borrow, renew, and order materials are links to renew your books and view finds. Also, you could see information about loan periods, other libraries you can visit, and that sort of thing. But the links that I like the most are links to go to CINAHL, which is a great database to start with when you're searching for nursing literature. And also, there's a research guide for nursing resources at UNCG. So the two links that I'm going to show you now are databases and how to get into CINAHL. And then, after that, I'm going to show you research guides and how to get to the nursing research guide so that you can see resource recommendations for nursing outside of just the CINAHL database. Clicking into databases takes you to a menu where you can choose from hundreds of resources available to you. Many of them focus on online articles, but we do also have ebook databases and streaming video databases, even a database just for dissertations. We have fantastic resources. But again, with the nurses, often I suggest that you start at CINAHL, which stands for Cumulative Index to Nursing and Allied Health. This database has articles. It also has descriptions of dissertations, descriptions of research instruments, descriptions of book chapters, <laughs> and even a few evidence-based care sheets. Although, if you're providing patient care and you'd like evidence-based summaries, CINAHL isn't necessarily the place to start. We have other resources that do that job even better. But this is definitely a good all-around place to start for most nursing work. For instance, Maybe you're interested in doing a little work on horizontal violence. I like that CINAHL has spelling suggestions and terminology suggestions. Other things that you might want to know are limits. You can limit in many different ways so that you don't get an overwhelming number of results. Publication date is a big one. You can also limit to English language results. Research articles won't guarantee that you get primary reports of research, but it will help to narrow you down to articles that mention different types of research projects or that are research projects. There are some quality improvement items uh, that will slip in here. Evidence-based practice is pretty similar. It will limit to articles that discuss evidence-based practice, articles that are examples of evidence-based practice, so a pretty broad limit, really. And yes, there is clinical information in CINAHL. So if you are searching a topic, for instance, maybe you want to look at COPD 
or gestational diabetes, you can limit down to articles um, that focus, that have a clinical patient care focus. Some of the other limits that you'll see here, geographic subset, so tempting, but I want to let you know this is a journal limit. So you could limit to journals in, published in Africa, Asia, and if you scroll all the way down in the U.S., that's not always useful, but it's good to know about. Again, journal subset includes limits such as nursing journals and core nursing. If you want to limit to standard publications in your field or key publications in your field, the limits uh, that are that I think are really fun and extra useful are things like age groups. Definitely, if you're seeking to limit your results down to a certain population. There are lots of different age groups you could limit to. I encourage you to explore these at your leisure. For now, I'm just going to do a search to see which authors might have used the term horizontal violence, and possibly <laughs> are there any subject terms or recommended search terms um, that have come up under horizontal violence as well. So, obviously, results down the center of the page. We get limits again uh, down that left column. You get the publication information a little bit up here. Metrics are kind of fun. They show um, what folks have done with this article. PDF full text. I love to see this. I could click on this to open the article, print it, download it. Other things that I think are nice about records in the CINAHL database. I can click on the article title to see some commands. So over here on the side, add to folder. This will um, temporarily put this record into a folder that's kept in this database. So if I want to do a search or two, pick out a few of the articles each time and set them aside temporarily, I can choose add to folder um, and have them set aside just during this session. If I love CINAHL and I plan on using this database all the time, I might want to create my own individual account with EBSCO, and I can do that by clicking on Sign In. In doing that, I would be able to save the citation within my own EBSCO account. And of course, there are other commands, print this screen, email this record, and if you do see PDF listed right here with the PDF symbol, uh, this full text file should come with the email message. Cite is awfully nice. It will suggest citations in several major styles. Not always exactly perfect, but it does a lot of the work for you. You can see there a reference for a references list. And of course, there are other commands that you can use as well. My other favorite is permalink. In case no one has mentioned this to you before, when you're searching article databases from a library or even a library catalog and other systems like that, the link up at the top of the screen that you think of as a web page is not going to be stable and it's not something that you're going to be able to copy and paste and send to someone if you want them to get to this page. It's not something you're going to be able to copy and paste if you yourself want to be able to get back to this page in five minutes. However, most library databases do have a stable link or a permalink command that you can click that will show you an extra little field where you will have um, another rather long looking web address that is actually stable, and it will let you log in from off-campus, and it can be shared. Other useful things about this record, we get subject headings, so recommended search terms um, that will help you find other articles on these topics, no matter what language an author chose to use in title and abstract. And often, there will be an abstract supplied. That can be pretty useful as well. There are other things to point out. If I scroll down a little, you'll notice that sometimes there's an article, for instance, this one from the Journal of Nursing Management, 
that doesn't have a PDF link right underneath. It says check for full text. Does that mean I'm out of luck? No. It means that CINAHL doesn't have the rights to this PDF. There's a really good chance that our library has this article from a different source. And even if we don't, you could use that interlibrary loan service to ask for a copy of this article. If I click on Check for Full Text, I'll get to a page from our link resolver that first summarizes the item I want. Here we go. And then, if we happen to have this article online, I'll see a View Full Text link. I'll click on that link. And in some cases, I'm taken right to the article that I want. It's fantastic. I just look usually at the top and the side for a link that says PDF or full text. Oh, haha, the side isn't over here. <laughs> so I could click on this to open up the article. Every now and then, we have um, a journal system, a journal company or vendor that's working with us that doesn't integrate too well with our link resolver. So we'll, um, the full text link will take us out to the current page for the journal. I'm going to pretend that's happening here. <laughs> so technically, view full text should take you right to the article. But every now and then, you will click on that link. And you might see a screen that looks like this. You see a summary of the journal, a list of volumes and issues, and a search in this journal. Don't despair. If the view full text link takes you here, more than likely we do have this article. You just need to navigate one or two more clicks to get to the exact article that you need. And you can do that either by clicking into the volume and issue that you need, or by typing the article title right in the search this journal box. There is a different outcome that I want to show you. You can tell this is where a lot of the questions that I get come from. <laughs> so there are times when you might see check for full text. You click on the link. You see that, yes, this is a, either a journal article or a newspaper article, a, a trade publication. This is something that has volumes and issues. But unfortunately, we just don't own it. So if you need this, please click on Interlibrary Loan to submit a request to get this item. Interlibrary Loan. Put in that same UNCG computer account, the username and password you use for Canvas and email. And the first time you do this, um, you actually will be taken to a page that's a little different from this. It asks you to enter contact information. Just put your contact information and save it. And then after that, every single time you click on that interlibrary loan button, you'll get to a page like this that fills in the publication information for you. And you just hit submit if you want this item. You're not going to be charged for this service. There's not a limit to the number of times that you can use this service. Um, you just submit the request. And our IOL staff will try to find a copy of the article. They usually are pretty successful within three to five business days. You, you get an email that says your item has arrived, and it gives you a link just in the email. Click that link, and you'll be prompted to log into this interlibrary loan system. You'll be taken to this main menu. And the next thing that you want to do is click on electronically received articles. And I don't currently have any ILL requests pending <laughs> or ILL requests that, that have been um, fulfilled recently. But you would have an, a PDF here that you could download, print, and save for yourself. In fact, I would suggest that when you get that link saying your ILL item has arrived, that you do that right away so you don't forget about it. These items will stay in the system for a little while, but not in perpetuity. There will be a little note saying when your interlibrary loan will expire. 
and usually it's at least a month out. But when you get the link, if you use Interlibrary Loan Service, use that link and save a copy of your item. So that's a quick look at searching CINAHL for nursing articles. Some of the features that are inside CINAHL records and also how you can click to check for full text if the PDF isn't sitting right here and what to do if you see that we do not happen to own the article that you need. There is one other link that I want to make sure that you see. And that is that is the library guide for nursing resources. So the way that you can get to that is choosing research guides by subject and nursing. So you'll notice that we have got recommendations for every discipline taught at UNCG, which is fantastic. If you happen to want to go out to other disciplines, you could look at a, a guide to education or management. But um, I really think that your needs should pretty much be met on the guide to nursing resources. So you can come here. You'll see on this side a picture of me. I'm the health sciences librarian. And if you do find that you would like some help in identifying resources, if you would like a little boost in reviewing the literature or finding something for a project, please send me an email. You'll notice my email is here and here. And during library operating hours, during library business hours, when we do have that chat with a librarian service available, there will also be a chat box here. Um, even if I don't happen to be at my desk, if I'm out giving a lecture, or if I'm traveling that day, or for whatever reason I'm not able to be logged in at my desk, um, it's nice to have that chat box. But if you would like to contact me directly, email l-a-l-e-i-n-i-n at uncg.edu. And I am typically scheduled between 9 to 5, Monday through Friday. My schedule changes a little bit because I am sometimes scheduled to work on an evening or a weekend. So um, I definitely would give that, you know, give me about 24 hours to, um, to respond. I will respond within that time to emails. And um, I love to talk to people by phone or online. Um, if you're not able to visit in person, we'll find a way to get you oriented and, and get you going. And you will notice that there are guides for different courses that have recommendations. There's a little shortcut here, healthcare articles. This is just a fun little widget that searches through the CINAHL database and also several other article databases that are kind of useful to you. A few other things that I want to point out about this guide to nursing. We have so many fantastic article databases. You're probably familiar with PubMed or Medline, which is the biggest part of PubMed. We have a link to PubMed right here. I'd suggest that you use one of our library links into PubMed uh, because you will get that sort of uh, check for full text inside PubMed that will take you into our, our article subscriptions if you start from a link from our library. There are other fantastic sources that we that we have. Of course, Dynamed Plus, clinical uh, summaries for primary care providers. We do have a subscription to Cochrane Library, wonderful systematic reviews. Many of these uh, are actually indexed, or there are records for them in CINAHL and PubMed. So often, you might find a Cochrane review in CINAHL and you can follow that check for full text link. It'll direct you out, and you'll click right into Cochrane Library. But I will say there are some extra things in Cochrane that aren't searched when you, when you um, start just with CINAHL. So if you're trying to be extremely thorough, especially if you want uh, more health technology assessments or maybe uh, you want to go, you want to include uh, descriptions of clinical trials, it's good to also search uh, Cochrane Library 
or think about what your research need is, what your topic is, and I'd be happy to direct you. There are some other resources down here that will have additional results that you might not find in CINAHL. Scopus is fantastic um, in terms of searching scholarly literature in many different disciplines. It will um, show which, uh, how articles cite to each other. It will summarize how many times articles in, in the database have cited. So you can sort results of the search to see which items are prominent. That can be a little bit exciting. Of course, the ERIT Guide to Education Literature could be helpful um, in addition to CINAHL. In some cases, if you want pedagogical methods, that sort of thing. ProQuest Central is an interdisciplinary set of um, lots of different databases all put together. Wonderful resource. It even includes dissertations. SAGE Research Methods is a little bit special. <laughs> it's just online handbooks and encyclopedias and guides to research methods. So. For those people who are going to be doing a focus group or are going to be doing some other research, this is a nice how-to guide. And of course, we have many, many other um, useful sources. As I say, a lot of times I will start nurses off in the CINAHL database, but so many other places where you could go, including ebook collections. We have links to health statistics. And we do have lots of other sources as well, including online videos. Overall, I think the main thing that I would like you to know really is um, come in through the library homepage, library.uncg, to access these resources. And if you'd like help, reach out. Don't spin your wheels for half an hour or an hour if you're wondering what do we have or if you're wondering how do I get to this. There is chat with a librarian, and there's also me, the health sciences librarian. And I usually try to get people to find me by going to the research guide for your subject. But there are lots of other ways to get a hold of me, too.